Kent Offalo, John LeMessurier, and Clive Dunn in Dad's Army. <laughs> A Soldier's Farewell, featuring John Laurie, Arnold Ridley, and Ian Lavender, with this week's guests Bill Pertwee, Larry Martin, and Pat Coombs. <laughs> Here is the news, and this is John Snag reading it. It is the spring of 1941, and never a day passes without Hitler renewing his attacks on Britain. However, the harder he tries, the more determined is the population that the streets of this country will never echo to the sound of Nazi jackboots. It is late evening, and down on the south coast, Captain Mannering and his platoon are on a bus returning to Warmington-on-Sea after a specially organized trip to the neighboring town. Hold very tight, please. Well, Wilson, what did you think of the evening? Well, I quite enjoyed it, sir. I was all surprised, really, because I, I didn't think I was going to. Really? Why? Well, you see, I, I don't usually care for Greta Garbo. No, no, Elizabeth and I have never been very keen. Still, she obviously has a crowd of following. I mean, the cinema was packed, wasn't it? Yes. Yeah. I must say, I was appalled by the behaviour of the audience at the end. What way, sir? I've never seen anything so disgraceful in all my life. Everybody charging out like that during the national anthem. I thought at least you would have stayed, Wilson. <laughs> Sergeant, it was your duty to set an example to the others. Well, I couldn't help it, sir. I sort of got carried along in the rush. Really? <laughs> Did you uh, enjoy the film, Mr. Mannering? Not really, Walker, no. I would have thought a film about Napoleon would have been concerned with strategy and tactics. I'd hoped we could learn something from it. Instead of that, he seemed to spend most of his time chasing Greta Garbo around a four-poster bed. <laughs> yeah, well, that's strategy and tactics, isn't it? <laughs> well, Mr. Manning, I certainly learnt something. Hey, Jock, what did you think of that M Mary Valeska? Never met her. No, Jock, the film. Oh, that? Oh, rubbish. She rubbish. A wanton waste of one and sixpence. <laughs> Well, I liked it. Yes, yeah, so did I, Joe. Yeah, I, I liked the part where Napoleon was saying farewell to his troops. Hey, I know what. Hey, let's take it in turns to do an impersonation of Charles Boyer. Whoever does it the worst has to pay the fares. That's a good idea, Pikey. Yeah. You start. Oh. <laughs> yeah, all right. Um. <clears throat> Soldiers of France. Our cows is lost. <laughs> Your emperor must now say goodbye. With this kiss, remember me. <laughs> that was rotten. You know, it's this. Soldiers of France, our cause is lost. Your emperor must now say goodbye. With this kiss, remember me. <laughs> You're supposed to be doing Charles Boyer, not Harry Champion. Right, you <laughs> sir. I'm not if you step in here do such childish, moronic nonsense. I'll be my own fair and no one else's. Excuse me, Mr. Manreen. Do you want to do an impersonation of Charles Boyer? Don't be ridiculous. <laughs> oh. Uncle Arthur, it's your turn then. Is it? Oh, uh, right, sir. Uh... <laughs> Soldiers of France. Our cause. Just a minute, just a minute. Huh? <laughs> what are you doing? Sorry, I was doing an impersonation of Frank, doing an impersonation do... of somebody else. You'll do nothing of the sort. Right, right, right. Sorry, sir. My sergeant, it's your duty to set an example. Anyway, it's very bad for discipline to do impersonations with the rank and file on a bus. Well, I'm sorry, sir. Sorry. Mr. Manreen. Yes, Frank. We were sitting a long way back in the cinema, weren't we? Yes, I, I couldn't see the screen very well. We should have sat in the ninth pennies, Mr. Mannering. No, 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 Pike, no. I couldn't sit right down in the front in those cheap seats. You never know who's been sitting in them. <laughs> well, at least, if I'd been sitting down there, I'd only have squandered ninth pence, not one and sixpence. <laughs> Cheer up, Jock. I'll tell you what, let's all have a bit of a sing-song, shall we? Yeah, good idea. Yeah, right. come What's on, then. All together. Yep. Roll me over in the clover. Roll me over, lay me down and do it again. Quiet! Roll me over! Roll me over! Quiet! Quiet! Stop it! Be quiet! Quite enough of that. Wilson, I don't know what's the matter with the men. That discipline seems to have gone to pot. Do you think so, sir? First, please. 
Any more fares, please? Two to Warmington on sea, please. Two threepennies. Thank you, sir. I really must apologise for my men singing that ribble song. Oh, no, that's quite all right. I get far worse than that on my bus. Really? I'm very distressing for you. No, I'm used to it. After all, there is a war on. Well, that's no excuse for slack behaviour. Oh, how very nice of you to think of me. I don't often get considerate passengers like you on my bus. There you are, sir. Two threepennies. Thank you. Fares, please. A charming woman, Wilson. <laughs> Awfully nice, sir. Oh. Yes, yes. Must be very difficult for her. Dealing with men passengers who get over familiar. Yes, well, I should think she could take care of herself, sir. She'd, she'd probably give him a punch on the nose. <laughs> really absurd. Hmm? I can see at a glance. She's a perfect lady. Must be awfully hard for her, working as a clippy. Oh, well, she's only doing her bit, sir. I realise that, Wilson. At the same time, one can't help wondering if it's right that a lady like her should be exposed to all the riffraff that uses the late-night transport. Uh, oh, uh, excuse me. I'm talking of riffraff, sir. Mm. Did you see who just got on? No. Who? <laughs> that awful Chief Warden fellow. Hodges. Oh, Lord. Mm. Hold tight, please. Hello, Napoleon. Been taking your Boy Scouts on an outing, have you? <laughs> We've been to the pictures, Mr. Hodges. Blimey, that's marvellous. That is Jerry liable to invade any minute, and you not go to the pictures. What did you do? Leave a note on the beach saying, Dear Hitler, please don't invade tonight. We've all gone to the cinema. <laughs> After that, why aren't you on duty? Well, if you must know, I've been attending a high-level meeting of Chief Wardens, top brass only. Fares, please. Oh, hello, sweetheart. I want a tuppy one, a nice big smile, and a tickle at the terminus. Oh, damn. <laughs> You'll be familiar with this lady. Well, I haven't checked. Mind you, the night is young, eh, darling? <laughs> Have you no respect for a good budget? No, no, it's all right, sir. Please sit down. I'm, I'm used to this type. Oh, very well. If you're sure. Thanks all the same, though. I, I do appreciate it. Pleasure, my dear. There you are, sir. Tap me one. Any more fares now? My word, sir. We are being gallant tonight. That sort of thing makes my blood boil. Warmington on sea, next. Stop. Nearly home, sir. Yes. Now, look here, Wilson. Sir. When the bus stops, I don't want any repetition of what happened in the cinema. All that mad charging for the exit and me underneath them. <laughs> now, I shall get off first. You better tell the men. All right, very good, sir. Excuse me. Would you all pay attention? All right. Now, look here. When the, when the bus stops, would you all please sit tight and let Mr. Mannering off first? Is that understood? Right. Well, here we are, sir. After you. Thank you, Wilson. Uh, oh, I've never seen anything like it. Who does he think he is? Oh, just clear off, will you? Oh, right. Hey, lads, it's closing time in five minutes. Come on, The last one in the public bars around. Mine's a double scotch. Have a shandy, please. Yeah, right. Come on, Mr. Uh, Gunn. Just push your way through. Come on. 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 Not. You're all right down there, sir. I mean, would you like me to give you a hand up? The floor isn't awfully clean. I'll talk to you later, Wilson. Good night, miss. Good night, sir. And in conclusion, and before we dismiss, I would like to say that I was not only shocked by last night's exhibition at the cinema, I was also deeply hurt that my platoon should behave in such a disrespectful manner. <clears throat> if I may say a word, Captain Mannering. Yes, please. Well, sir, speaking purely for myself, I didn't intend any disrespect. But as an historian and a man of considerable intellect, I was fair scunnered by the historical inaccuracies in the film. I stuck it as long as I could. But in the end, well, I felt I just had to discuss it with the manager from the intellectual point of view, you understand? Hmm. What happened? I got my one in six bar. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Speaks up. Yes, Joe. Well, sir, speaking on behalf of the platoon, I think I can say that we're all very sorry. Well, that's all very well, Jones. But fine words, butter no parsnips. <laughs> hey, Pikey, what's he talking about? <laughs> parsnips are out of season and you can't get no butter. <laughs> Here. 
I can get you some butter. Hey, can you really, Joe? Hey, my mum would like some, please. Yeah, and so would I. Is, is it all right, Joe? Oh, it's lovely. Made from ewe's milk. Oh, I don't, <laughs> don't want it if it's been used. <laughs> Not used, you silly old duffer. Use female sheep. Stop talking in the ranks. Now, pay attention. I don't intend to overlook this matter, and so I've decided to make the punishment fit the crime, to quote the words of Gilbert and Sullivan. Here he goes again, Jock. What's Gilbert and Sullivan got to do with the crime? <laughs> now, you will all come to attention while Sergeant Wilson plays the national anthem on the gramophone. And what's more, you will stand there and reflect while the notes of this glorious tune float through the hall. Tune, ten, hut! Wound it up, Wilson. Oh, yes, sir, yes. All right, good. Off you go, then. Very good, sir. Here it comes. <laughs> How dare you! Take it off at once. Take your pardon, sir. I, I can't. Take it off. I can't really hear you off your well. I said turn that filth off. <laughs> What's wrong? What's wrong? That was the German national anthem. I'm so sorry, sir. I wasn't really listening. Uh, anyway, I, I couldn't really help it, sir. The, the label just says, National Anthems of All Nations. Well, play the British one. It's all very well, sir, but where exactly is the British one on the record? Now, where do you think it would be? I don't know. I, I've never really given it an awful lot of thought. Oh. The British one is always the first, of course. Give it to me, I'll do it. That's quite all right, it's quite all right. I'm quite capable of putting on a record. Yes, we haven't got all night, though. Come on, give it to me. It's really not necessary, sir. Come on, really I just give, give me that record. record. Would you give me the record? That's what you get. <laughs> now look what you've done. It wasn't my fault, sir. You dropped it. Be that as it may, it was still your fault. <laughs> Permission to speak, sir. Yes, what is it? Would it be in order for us to come out of the attention position while you're discussing it, sir? <laughs> There's bits of me have gone to sleep and some of them are quite important. <laughs> there you go. But you stand at ease. Now, in view of this slight mishap on the part of Sergeant Wilson, I shall postpone this until tomorrow evening. So, ten, ten. There is, Miss. Come into the office, Wilson, will you? I want to talk to you about Friday's gas drill. Yes, of course, sir. Yes. Now, I've been giving the matter a bit of thought, and I've come up with one or two ideas. Nothing sensational, do you understand? Oh, no, of course not, sir, no. <laughs> well, I wondered if we could... Oh, dear, I wonder if that... Come in! Uh, ah, Mr. Mannerin, uh... Yes, Walker, what is it? Well, I, uh, I, uh... I just wanted to have a word with uh, you, a bit quiet like. Oh, I see, but would you like me to leave, sir? Good Lord, no, Wilson, no, no, no. Sure it won't be necessary. Right, speak up, Walker. All right, then. I've got your cheese. Well, don't tell everybody. <laughs> Keep your voice down. Blimey, make up your mind. Anyway, there it is. One pound of the finest cheddar. Oh, yes. Very nice. You understand, Wilson, this is not for me. Oh, yes. <laughs> of course, of course it isn't, sir. Because you know I don't really approve of this sort of thing. Oh, no, no. Oh, well, in that case, I'll take it back. No, then. no, 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 it's very partial to cheddar cheese. Right? <laughs> mm. Warmington, 9 2, please. It really does look awfully nice. Sir. Hey, don't put your dirty fingers all over it, Wilson. <laughs> Elizabeth's going to eat that. It's a vegetarian, you know. Uh -huh. mm. I've planned this as a little surprise. I thought we might have a nice toasted cheese supper together tonight. <laughs> That's cosy, isn't it? It'll be all, Walker. <laughs> All right, yeah, but, all right, Mr. Mannerman. Well, I'll be off then, eh? Good night, all. Good, Good night. night. Good night. I say, Wilson, mm -hmm. that cheese looked delicious. Yes, it does indeed, sir. Mm. Elizabeth will be delighted when I take this home for her tonight. <laughs> but, oh, uh, 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 hello, Elizabeth? I it's George. You've been a long time answering. Where have you been, dear? Yeah. Oh, I see, yes. <laughs> <laughs> You've been down the shelter. Ah. <laughs> there hasn't been a raid, has there, sir? No, no, it's just that she likes it down there. <laughs> Elizabeth, I, uh, I thought we might sleep in the house tonight, dear. After all, 
We haven't had a raid for a few nights now, and, uh... Yes. Yeah, well, yes, dear, I know that. And, um, I might... I might have a little surprise for you. <laughs> what? <laughs> yes, dear. <laughs> she hung up. Is there anything the matter, sir? No, no, she's had her supper, and now she's going to bed. Well, why didn't you tell her about the cheese? I wouldn't listen. Oh. You know, it's a funny thing about women, Wilson. Every time you plan a surprise, somehow it always goes wrong. Yes, I know what you mean, sir. I was so looking forward to that toasted cheese supper, too. <laughs> well, I've got an idea, sir. Why, why don't we have the toasted cheese supper here? What? Just the two of us together? Yes, why not, sir? That's very thoughtful of you, Wilson. Yeah. By the way, I'm, I'm sorry I went on at you about that record. Oh, don't worry about that, sir. You know, Wilson, I... I can't get over Elizabeth's attitude on the phone just now. I don't think I'll ever understand women if I live to be a hundred. But quite beyond me. Really, sir? I've always regarded you as having quite a way with the ladies. Oh. No, no, I, I wouldn't say that. Well, what about last night on the bus? Was that nice conductress? The gallant way you told the warden off when he was so rude to her. No doubt about it. She, she was a charming woman. Charming. You know, somehow I don't think she'd have refused a toasted cheese supper. <laughs> oh, well, you make the toast, Wilson. I'll cut up the cheese. All right, sir. Elizabeth. I'm home. Are you awake? Elizabeth? That's funny, she's not here. <laughs> oh, she'll be down the shelter. Damn, if I'd known that, I needn't have bothered to get undressed in the bathroom. <laughs> <laughs> you have tired. I'll just sit there alone. Good Lord, two o'clock. I dare it was so late. There. <laughs> oh. And eaten all that cheese. Far too rich. Oh, this is much more comfortable than that shelter. Mm, lovely. Marshal Ney. How goes the battle? I really can't see what's happening very well from back here. Well, it's your own fault, sire. I did tell you we should have been at the front, in the ninth pennies. <laughs> Take me to the Duke of Wellington at once, son. I must see him. Huh? Wait here a moment. <coughs> Uh, Your Grace. What is it, Major Hodges? Uh, Colonel Fraser has returned from the field of battle, sir. He wishes to see you. Oh, very well. Ask him to come in, will you? Right you are, sir. Colonel, His Grace will see you now. Thank this you. This way, and mind how you go over that tent flap. We don't want to show a light. <laughs> ah, Fraser. <laughs> How's it looking? I have good news, sir. Bluthnod has arrived. Oh, really, Fraser? I'm in no mood for playing the piano now. <laughs> Mon Emperor! Mon Emperor! Yes, Captain General. Sire, je avais une news terrible. What is it? You've lost the ruddy battle, mate. Second Wellington, my brave Highlanders. Give those floggies hell, lads! Ah, oh, just 
Yes, look at them, Wellington. Look at the speed. Yes, we're awfully good. Should break a few records. <laughs> Mon Emra, Mon Emra. What is it now, Gerard? Chai have I un more news terrible. I'm listening. Wellington is waiting at a nearby farm for you to sign a surrender. Very well. Hodges? Inform the Duke of Wellington that Napoleon and the remains of his beaten army are approaching. Oh, it'll be a pleasure. Oh, I'm looking forward to this. Napoleon's been asking for it for a long time now. Platoon, out! <laughs> Mon Emperor, uh, <laughs> we have arrived. Good afternoon, sir. How do you do? Not very well at the moment. <laughs> well, I just want to take down a few details. Your name? Bonaparte. Initials? N. <laughs> Address? Versailles. The palace? Mm -hmm. What street is that in? Oh, ask anyone. It's not difficult to find. <laughs> well, just sign here, please. Can I borrow your pen? I'm sorry. I never lend my pen to strangers. <laughs> Here you are, sire. Best quality quill. Ten francs to you. <laughs> Why is it so expensive? Well, it's very special, isn't it? La plume de matante. <laughs> I can't sign this document. Look, Napoleon, don't argue. Just sign here like the Duke says. What are you going to do with me? We're sending you to the Isle of Elba. So, goodbye, Napoleon. I mean, I... May I say how sorry I am that you lost? Perhaps under the circumstances we could forget the formalities and I can call you Bonaparte. Of course. It was a good fight. Go, 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 Excuse a moi, mon emperor. Permission to parley vous. Yes, what is it, Jones? Your imperial guard is waiting for you to say farewell. I am coming. What are they going to do to you, sir? They're sending me to Elba. Hence the expression, giving you the Elba. <laughs> I must say it was damn decent of that froggy to let me call him Bonaparte. He looks more like falling apart at the moment. <laughs> oh, no, 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 that'll do, Hodges, that'll do. I do all that fighting to make me very thirsty. I think refreshment is called for. Corporal Jones? Oui, sir. <laughs> I may as well start my goodbye with you. Oh, thank you, sir. Goodbye, Corporal. Goodbye, sir. Permission to kiss you. <laughs> Get my sister Sissy to send you some of her upside down cakes. <laughs> Thank you, Grenadier Godfrey. <laughs> Goodbye, sir. Goodbye, Grenadier Pike. <laughs> My mum will not be proud of me, sire, when I tell her I've been kissed by an emperor. <laughs> Corporal Jones, please hand me our imperial standard. Here we are, sir. <laughs> Soldiers of France, our cause is lost. France has fallen. So remember me, though I love you all, I cannot embrace you all. Oh, beloved standard, with this kiss, remember me. Goodbye, my soldiers. Goodbye, my sons. Goodbye. My children. Here, you 
Frenchies. I've got a message. Do you mind having some respect? How dare you interrupt our anthem? Oh, sorry, I'm sure. Now, what did you wish to say? Well, I've got a message from His Grace, the Duke of Wellington. He invites you to have a drink with him in the local bistro. That's very merso boku of him, isn't it? <laughs> On behalf of the lads, Jack set. Just a minute, Jones. I haven't finished saying farewell yet. Brave soldiers, it has been an honour for me to serve... Oh, don't hang about, then they're open! My dear Marie, we have only two more hours together before the ship sails away, taking me into exile. I can't bear to see you leave, Napoleon. Nor I have to leave you. But you must be brave. It is the fortunes of war, you know. Yeah, I suppose so. I'm very fond of you, Mario Leska. Thank you. As we still have two hours together before I lose you forever, why don't we celebrate? You mean... Yes, that's right. Why don't we have a farewell toasted cheese supper? <laughs> ah. A toasted cheese supper. Just you and I. Yeah. And please let me have something to remember you by, my dear Napoleon. A likeness, perhaps. Of course, my dear. Take this cameo picture of me. It may be small... But the profile is good. <laughs> Thank you. Think of me sometimes, dearest Murray. Oh, I shall treasure it always. Look, I'll even keep it here close to my heart. And whenever I gaze at your handsome face, it'll ring a little bell with me. <laughs> you just punched my nose. <laughs> Up past eight. I better hurry. I should be late for the bank. Oh, I'm not looking forward to today at all. I've got a nasty feeling it's going to be one of those days when absolutely nothing goes right. Hello, what's there? Oh. A note from Elizabeth. Why were you late last night? <laughs> speaking to you today. <laughs> mm. Oh, well... Things aren't going to be quite as bad as I thought they were. <laughs> that episode of Dad's Army, based on the original television series by Jimmy Perry and David Croft, you heard Arthur Lowe as Captain Mannering, John LeMessure as Sergeant Wilson... Clive Dunn, Corporal Jones, Arnold Ridley, Private Godfrey, Ian Lavender, Private Pike, Bill Pertwee, ARP Warden, Larry Martin, Private Walker, and Pat Coombs as the Clipper. The Soldier's Farewell was adapted for radio by Harold Snowd and Michael Knowles and produced by John Dyer. <laughs>